We will now talk about the notion of relations, which is a mathematical structure that's usually defined on a set of sets or on, on more than one set in, in general. And these relations are, you can think about them as generalization of functions. So we are going to relate an element, for example, from set A to an element in set B. And in a function, we could not map one element in A to more than one element in B. In a relation, we can say that A could be in relation to two different elements or to 15 different elements in B and so on. So what is a relation or a binary? Let's start with a binary relation, which is a relation defined on two sets, okay? A binary relation from set A to set B is a subset of the Cartesian product of A, and A times B. So it's a very simple definition what the relation is mathematically. If you have a set A and a set B, compute their Cartesian product, which is a set of all pairs with one element from A with one element from B. As I remind you here that the Cartesian product of A and B is the set of all pairs where A is from A and B is from B. Okay? And if you take any subset of that, then you have a binary relation. Okay? So, for example, if I take... If I take a to B, A, B, C, and B to B, 5, 6, 7, and, you know, here's the one example of a relation, R1 is A5 and B5, for, ex for example, because it's a subset of the Cartesian product, therefore it's a relation. Another, another example, A6, B, 6, C, 6 as well. This is a relation, okay? A third example is the empty set. It's a subset of the Cartesian product, therefore it's a relation. Another example, R4, is the entire Cartesian product, right? So if I take the whole set of pairs, the entire set of pairs from A, A and times B, then that's also a relation, okay? So the way we, we denote that something is an element in the relation, we say that if we say that the pair AB is in the relation, we use set notation like this, or sometimes we write it ARB to denote that A is in relation to B. If we want to say that AB is not in the relation, we again using set notation, we can say the pair AB is not in R, but sometimes also we say we write something like this, ARB, and you strike through R, okay? So this is what the binary relation is. Of course, we can define these relations, you know, on sets, on, on, on infinite sets, and so on as well. Okay. Now, a binary relation, there is a specific type of binary relation we are interested in, which is the binary relation on the set itself, a binary relation on A, which is a, basically a subset of the Cartesian product of A with itself. Okay, so now I can talk, for example, about more interesting relations here. So let me talk, for example, suppose I want to define the relations on the set of all integers. Okay, so I can define a relation one to be the set of all pairs of integers such that A is smaller than or equal to B. Okay, so what elements are in this? It's the elements, the pair A, B, such that A is smaller than or equal to B. So for example, 3, 9 is in R1, but 5 minus 2 is not in R1, right? Because 5 is not smaller than or equal to minus 2. I can define a relation, for example, another relation R2 to be A, B, A, mod 3, equal B. So what is this notation A mod 3? So take A and B, divide both of them by 3, then the remainder must be the same. Okay, so this is what we call A and B are equivalent modulo 3. Okay, so here, for example, when I talk about integers, let's say, you know, 3 and 9 are in R2. Because if you take 3 divided by 3, the remainder is 0. Take 9 divided by 3, the remainder is 0. So 3, 9 are in R2. And we can look at 4 and 13 in R2, for example, because 4 divided by 3, the remainder is 1. 13 divided by 3, the remainder is 1. However, 7 and 8 are not in R2 
because 7 divided by 3, the remainder is 1, 8 divided by 3, the remainder is 2. These two, 7 and 8 are not equivalent mod 3. And we can define as many relations as we want. I can define R3, for example, to be AB such that A equal B. Okay? So in this case here, for example, 0, 0 is in R3, 1, 1 is in R3, but 1, 2 is not in R3, right? Because 1 and 2 are not equal. So a binary relation is always defined over the Cartesian product of the set with itself. So all of these are defined over Z, which, are, which basically means they are subsets of Z times Z. We will talk about four important properties of relations. So the first one is reflexivity. A relation is reflexive. A relation over set A is reflexive if the pair AA is in that relation for every element A in the set A. Okay. So for example, let's talk about this. We talked about the we are talking about relations over the integers. So for example, we talked about AB such that a is smaller than or equal to b the question here for every integer for every integer m is m m in r1 the answer is yes because every integer is smaller than or equal to itself so this function is or this relation is reflexive right because m m is in r1 for every for every m in that set of integers However, look at R2, AB, where A is smaller than B. This is not reflexive because, for example, 2, 2 is not in R2, right? Because 2 is not smaller than 2. Okay. So this, for, for a relation to be reflexive, the every element has to be in relation to itself in, based on that relation for every element in the set A. Okay. The second property is symmetry, which we all know about what it means for something to be symmetric. What we are saying here, to think about the notion of friendship. If I am a friend with person X, usually what it means is that person X is also friend with me, right? So friendship is usually a symmetric relation, right? If A is related to B, then B is related to A. Notice here it's very important to, to pay attention to what the definition is saying. It's saying if AB is an R, then BA is an R. It is not saying that for every two elements A and B, we have to have AB and BA in R, okay? So, for example, if we look at the relation, uh, the, the relation AB such that A equals B, this is symmetric for sure. Right? But if we look at, this is R1, but if we look at the relation again, AB, such that A is smaller than or equal to B, this is not symmetric, right? Because, for example, 3, 9 is in R2, but 9, 3 is not in R2, right? So this is not symmetric. So for, for a relation to be symmetric, you need to check the following go through the elements of that relation and look at every uh, every element if a b and check is b a in the relation if that's true for every element in that relation then it is symmetric otherwise it is not a notion that sim that related to symmetry is the notion of anti-symmetry anti-symmetry be careful about what it's saying it's not saying that if a b is in the relation then b a should not be in the relation that's not what anti-symmetry says Anti-symmetry says that if you have AB in the relation and BA in the relation, then they better be equal. If AB is in the relation and BA in the relation, then it must be that A equals B. Okay? So, for example, if I go to the relation R1 and I say it's AB when A is smaller than or equal to B. Is this anti-symmetric? The answer is yes, because what does it mean for... Suppose that AB is in R1. We are saying that A is smaller than or equal to B. And if BA is in R1, this means that B is smaller than or equal to A. But how is it possible to have A smaller than or equal to B and B smaller than or equal to A? This is only possible when A equals B. 
So we can conclude A equals B. Therefore, this relation is anti-symmetric. Okay? If we look at the relation, here's an example of a relation that is not anti-symmetric. If A, B, and A is equivalent to B mod 3. So if you look at this here, 3, 6 is in this relation. And 6, 3 is in this relation. But... 6 is not equal to 3. Therefore, this is not anti-symmetric. So you can have AB and you can have BA there, but B and A don't have to be equal. So it is not anti-symmetric. The last property I will talk about is the notion of transitivity. And the notion of transitivity, again, this is what we usually refer to as the friend of my friend is my friend. So if I am related to B, B related to C, then I am related to C. Okay? So if A is related to B, B related to C, then A is related to C. Okay, so here one example of a, of a relation that is transitive is, is the less than or equal, for example, right? So if I take R1 to be, sorry, AB, such that A is smaller than or equal to B, and look at it, if, if AB is in R1, then we are saying A smaller than or equal to B. If BC is in R1, we are saying B is smaller than uh, or equal to C. If A is smaller than or equal to B and B is smaller than or equal to C, then A is smaller than or equal to C here, okay? Uh, if I want to look at a relation that's not transitive, again, keep in mind that you can build any relation you want. So here's a relation that is not transitive. One, two, 2, 3. This is our relation. Suppose I'm defining it over all the integers. This is our relation. We have 1, 2, 2, 3. If it was transitive, it must have 1, 3 there. But 1, 3 is not there. Therefore, R2 is not transitive. Okay? The last thing I want to talk about is the notion of combining relations. That if you give me two relations, keep in mind that relations are sets because we said the relation is just a subset of the Cartesian product. So it's a set of elements. Therefore, you can take the union of two relations. You can take the intersection of two relations, the complement of relation, the subtraction of relations, and so on. But one specific operation that we don't talk about in, in general for sets and we talk about, in the case of relations, is similar to the notion of, of composition of functions. But here's the composition of relation. And this is where we apply transitivity, in a sense. So if I want to compose R and S, so I have two relations. Both of them are from, uh, sorry, R is from A to B, and S is from B to C. And I want to compose them. Then, if I compose S on top of R, then I first map A or connect A to its related element in B, and then through S I apply it on B to C, and this gives me the new element AC, okay? So if you have a relation, again, if you think about it here, what this is saying, okay? If you have AB is in R, AB is in R, and BC is in S, then AC now, is an element of the composition, okay? So this is how we, we compose two relations. It's similar to functions. If a function f sends a to b and a function g sends b to c, then the composition of g on f is a map to c. Here in relations, a is in relation to b, b is in relation to c. Under the composition of these, a is in relation with c as well, okay? And the last word I want to say, which is not about operations or properties, is that I talked only about binary relations, but relations can be defined on any number of sets. And for example, you can define a relation on the set A, B, C, D, which is basically a subset of the Cartesian product. In this case, every element is a, a tuple here. Okay, so, and I... This is one of the great examples of where relations appear, again, in the notion of relational databases. These databases are built on top of these relations. Where you talk about A, B, C, D, this is really when you have a table in a relational database with four columns, A, B, C, D. This, is, this table is really a relation. 
which is a subset of A, B, C, of A, B, C, and D. Okay, but in general, you know, in mathematics and in discrete math and so on, most of the relations we focus on are binary relations defined over A times B, or sometimes binary relation on the set itself, which is a, a relation defined over the, the set A, which is a subset of the Cartesian product of A with itself.